All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Omega Stock-alike Utility Vehicles mod, which is being made by form user Omega482. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build your own versions of those lovely little utility vehicles we see buzzing around the Vehicle Assembly Building and the Space Plane Hangar. So let's jump right on in there to take take a look at the parts we do get. We're going to start by throwing one of them into the world so I can place a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake and then go to our mod filters, leaving on just OSUV. And this first command pod that we popped into the world is the S1 Utility Vehicle Cab, which is a crude command pod with a crew capacity of 1 and a minimum crew to operate of, of course, one, with a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, an engine that's actually really a generator using liquid fuel and air intake to produce electric charge, does have, of course, its own built-in air intake, the crew report science experiment, electric charge of 50, and liquid fuel of 25. Overall, a very nice little cab and a good recreation of the ones that we see buzzing all about. It's quite nice. Now, the next cab that we have, the S2 Utility Vehicle Cab, is effectively the same thing. It's just wider. That is the only difference between the two. As it has the same stats of holding one crew member, minimum of one to operate, the same data transmitter, reaction wheel, the same engine slash generator, air intake, crew report, 50 electric charge, and 25 liquid fuel. So all in all, you just get the wider bed for more cargo capacity. Now, two things I should mention on these that, um, I hope get updated in the future. I don't know if there are plans for it or not, but the first is there is currently no interior view. This is just a blank space for your Kerbals to go into. You can right-click over on this side of the cab to pop them in and out of the thing, but you can't actually look in from their internal viewpoint. The, I, hope, I hope that does get added possibly down the road in the future. The other thing is these textured lights. They are purely textured lights. I would love to see those actually be functional, but as you can see here, we have no lights to turn on. I don't know if that's difficult or not to do, but it would be a nice feature that hopefully, perhaps, we might see one day. Now, moving on, the next part is skipping all the way down the categories to ground, where we have the utility vehicle wheel, which, as you can see here, is a wheel that spins and makes your cars move. And it will do so with a max speed of 58 meters per second. Of course, depending on how much cargo you have on one of these, that could be a, a lot slower. Using electric charge at a max rate of 3.5 per second, 30 degrees of steering range, and a pretty meager suspension at point two. So these things are definitely ro low riders, but I mean, that's how they are in the world there as well. So, uh, the Kerbals seem to do just a fine job driving them. Hopefully you will as well. Now, the rest of the parts, they're all the way down here in utility, having nothing here in thermal, electrical, communication, or science. And this is really where the meat of everything is, so I'm actually going to pop off these. And the next parts we're going to take a look at are the chassis and flatbeds. And, of course, this one being the S1, we'll start there. And we have the S1 utility vehicle chassis, which goes on right there. It has 30 built-in liquid fuel for the generator and a level wheel well for the wheels to go into and is quite nice and you know it's it's flatbed well chassis technically the next part the next part's the flatbed and we have it in two sizes of either the long or the short now they have no other stats besides that no internal fuel or anything like that they are purely structural flatbed pieces for you to then place things on top of which is pretty handy and we then, of course, have them in the larger S2 size, again with 30 liquid fuel on the chassis with the wheel wells and just being wider. And then the same long size flatbed and short size flatbed, once more, just wider. And again, nice parts. Now, the rest of the things we have here are 
somewhat decorative, but some very useful. We have decorative pieces like the transport crate, which we can pop onto there. And it comes in three different varieties, the Type A, Type B, and Type C, and are purely aesthetic, but hey, they look darn good. We then also have the tank fuselage section, which once more comes in either a Type A or Type B style for you to add a little bit of uh, interesting aesthetics to things. And then we also, if I pop these off, have the utility support unit. I really wish this one did something because it sounds wonderful to have a utility support unit, but it just has uh, two different types of designs, either this large one here or a much smaller smaller scale sized one here and is purely decorative but still a cool piece and do allow you to make some cool interesting uh, utility vehicles now the remaining part oh wait I forgot one more the tool transport case which we can pop right on there and has three variants the type A the type B and the type C I think the B is my favorite because it well it actually looks like a tool case and that's wonderful. Now the final two pieces, now that I do actually get through the others, we have two different fuel tanks, and these... These are my favorite reasons to have these utility vehicles, because if you combine them with, say, the Kerbal Inventory System, you can actually make this a usable refueling truck. So we have the S1 fuel tank right here, and it is, well, the fuel tank built to go on the S1 fuselage size holding 225 liquid fuel and 275 oxidizer and like I said if you do have the Kerbal inventory system installed you can attach some piping to this thing drive out to the runway with it hook it up to your plane to refuel after a landing it's just fun to have something like that and then of course we have a S2 version of it which is holding a lot more fuel at 1,107 liquid fuel and 1,353 oxidizer. So you could uh, do a pretty good job of refilling, refilling some planes with this. It's quite nice. Now I would love to see some other things thrown in here. It'd be pretty cool to have, uh, you know, some containers for the Kerbal Inventory System. But of course, there are plenty of mods that add those in there that you could chuck onto this thing. All in all. Some pretty good parts, some fun decorative aesthetic pieces, but also some things that are quite useful and can give these utility vehicles some actual utility. So let's jump out of the space plan hangar here and take a look at a couple of them that I built in the world and parked earlier over here by the astronaut complex. So go to the S1 utility. Uh, and this is one that I, I don't know why, but I just kind of threw some other electrical sources onto this thing. Cause even though the engine, when you turn on, is actually a pretty good generator. It will still drain a bit of power. So I did add on some solar panels and some uh, radioisotope generators to give it a little bit more power generation capability. But if we do turn on the engine here, it will uh, actually do pretty darn well. So if we turn off our brakes and start driving around, we have our utility vehicle. Again, the utility thing is purely aesthetic but it's just fun to drive it around and we can come over here to where I have uh, three other vehicles that I've parked two of them being fueled uh, fuel utility vehicles and this one here just having the aesthetic pieces on it in the s2 size just to show you some of the things you could build now of course you combine this with other mods you can give these utility vehicles a whole lot more use in the world especially with with the Kerbal inventory system. I just have wonderful thoughts of landing a plane or bringing a boat over to shore and then driving one of these utility vehicles up to it, getting the Kerbal out to hook the piping up and then refueling them. It would be a wonderful thing to do. Now, I would recommend when you're building these to perhaps put on more wheels than you think you need. Uh, this large fuel tank, for instance, is very very heavy so if we actually switch over to that one you'll notice it um it's pretty slow it's it's really slow 
this is pretty much top speed for it. I mean, I think I actually got it up to like five meters per second earlier when I was testing. But yeah, it's uh, it's not going to go very fast. Now, of course, I haven't had the engine on for this one, so the meager electric charge it has has already been uh, used up. But if we start up the engine here, you can see that thing fill up pretty darn quick and it is useful as you can see with uh, going full throttle it will drain a bit which is why I added up the electric or the uh, solar panels to the other one but still quite useful and with the engine it doesn't use a lot of liquid fuel so the uh, just capacity of the cab alone will allow this thing to be powered for quite some time and yeah that is the Omega's stock alike utility vehicles mod I really do love this thing and I know we have actually seen some other mods that add these in in the past and I like seeing other ta uh, takes on it I especially love the addition of the fuel tanks in this one all the fun aesthetic parts it's just cool to have. So if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for this episode today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.